Welcome everyone to the Q and A for the for start again, David. Let me hit it again. Ready? Welcome everyone to the Q and A for the 13th annual Outshine Film Festival, Fort Lauderdale edition. We've got the Q and A for Jump Darling. With us is Phil Connell. He's the director, writer, and producer. And we are presented, of course, by Broward County uh, Cultural Division, Cultural Builds Florida, and Gilead. Welcome in. Come on in, Phil. Hey, Marky, how you doing? A multi-dimensional man. I mean, we're talking about writing, we're talking about directing, and we're talking about producing. How did you have all the time to do all that? I mean, my God, that's a that's a big task for a film like this. <laughs> um, well, you really have no choice. If you want to, if you want to um, make a first feature, ultimately you're going to be doing a lot of the heavy lifting because um, you know you're uh, you're untested. But uh, that being said, there there are there. I was one of uh, a fleet of producers, so I did have a lot of help on the producing front. It was not, it was not just me. So a first feature with Cloris Leachman, tell us about that. That's pretty intense. Uh, and was yeah. she in the film? Yes, uh, yes, it, it 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 was. It was it was magic, and it was amazing. We we had always sort of, I had always had the vision that we had a bit of an opportunity with with this film just because of the nature of the script that, um, you know, I had this film carrying role for an actor, you know, over the age of 85. Um, and I sort of thought, you know, hey, if you're still working and you're over 85, um, you know, maybe you're not getting a ton of scripts where you get to, where you get to carry the movie. So maybe I have a shot at getting a star. Um, and that was kind of the, the principal that we sort of went to market with. And, um, you know, when we started casting the film, we um, went to Cloris's team. She was, you know, this is a very short list of, of women who kind of fit that criteria. And obviously Cloris was there and uh, her team loved it and was interested. She was into it. So that was that. That's a great, great first start. You know, not often that I get, in, get to interview somebody that directs, writes, produces everything. So it's your vision that you're bringing to life and you're doing all the creative elements even behind the scene to bring all, bring that all to life. So let's let's talk about this character, Russell, because he, he is an interesting, um, interesting guy. He's a little selfish for sure. Um, and, he, you know, obviously his his passion is to one day become a drag queen. But there's a lot of subtext to the character. How did you create Russell? And then let's talk to us about how you brought him to life. Uh, on the big screen. Right. Um, yeah. When I started writing the script, I realized I was, you know, I was, I was, I, it, there was always kind of uh, this intergenerational sort of family love story. A grandmother, a grandson was always kind of a feature of that, both at kind of a, a crossroads and a turning, very significant turning point in their lives. Um, and that was kind of the heart that I started with. But, you know, when I, when I was crafting, Russell's narrative in particular, I, I, I was really telling the story of choosing life as an artist and choosing life, particularly as a queer artist and um, and sort of the challenges um, that one faces that both in choosing life as an artist and all the judgment and risk that comes along with that and then mixing that in with, um, you know, issues of queerness as well and the specifics of uh, choosing life as a queer List. And then, you know, going even a layer deeper and more specifically with respect to drag. Um, and I was just really interested in kind of illuminating that choice and what one has to face and and give up um, at that kind of precipice of uh, a point where you're going to have to give something significant up. In his case, um, the relationship, but also what the relationship represented. Um, and uh, that was kind of the starting point. Uh, and and it, it obviously built from there with a lot of complexities to the character from uh, his father being kind of the same guy that he was, as it turned out, uh, to his selfishness, his his desire to be to, to, to enter into the drag world or to be part of the drag world, which I think he already was. Um, drag had a very major component to me, a, a very big subtext in, in, in the entire production and from my perspective, I felt that the writer, director, really uh, had the drag element in mind throughout, you know, the, the toughness of leading a drag life and, 
the, the people that play those roles and everything else. Talk to us about how you built the drag character, how important it was to make sure that you elicited uh, drag throughout the movie and why you picked that subject. Right. Um, yeah. So like I said, in the, in the, in the sort of first answer, with the, 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 the anchor and the core of it was choosing life as an artist and specifically a queer artist um, in terms of, you know, bringing that to bear and um, really getting into the specifics of drag and the world of drag, um, you know, um, that was a lot, a couple things. So I spent a lot of time, you know, speaking with drag queens uh, about their experiences and, um, you know, in, in choosing that life and what they were up against. And, you know, some of, a lot of those things, you know, made it into the film and um, in a couple specific cases, um, like the big scene that, um, that uh, Fairy Longshong has at the, end of the, at the end of the movie with Russell, a lot of that narrative in that scene was built off her actual story as a drag performer. Um, you know, so that was that was one thing. And I guess the other thing was really wanting to sketch out, uh, you know, my lens on drag as a consumer of drag, particularly in Toronto over my uh, my entire adult life that has a very robust drag scene. Um, you know, drag currently has a very sort of, you know, through the the, the incredible sort of uh, pop culture lens that RuPaul's has uh, made in the last kind of five to ten years on the scene, a very sort of pop culture version of drag. Uh, I was really interested in kind of illuminating my experience with drag on the strip, you know, in the in the sort of dingy, dark corners of, of clubs where we all go and escape from kind of our, um, you know, straight performing kind of lives. And so, you know, especially given that this was a family drama and he was choosing life as a drag, I really wanted to draw out that contrast of um you know um having ha having the duality of life as a queer person um that we often experience and then situating that in this particular story do you feel like the character that you wrote in russell and in cloris leachman um do you feel that the character you wrote i mean margaret uh actually came to life on screen the way that you wrote it <laughs> um I do. I do. I do. I do think so. Um, you know, um, you know, filmmaking is an interesting, you know, like all, like all, you know, art forms you have that you have sort of a vision that you start with and then you, uh, you know, you spend, you know, the entire production journey, uh, you know, trying to, you know, trying to enact and, and make that come to life. So of course there's things that, you know, when it's all said and done and finished that, you know, you probably go back and change or fix or, or rewrite, you know, whatever part in the process. Um, but I, um, but I am quite, uh, I am quite satisfied and, and, and proud of the movie, you know, given, given the limitations that we had and that we were up against. Um, and uh, I think that we did do the best we could and made the best film that we could. And I do think that, um, you know, we hit the jackpot with both Thomas and Chloris. Um, you know, the beating heart of this film is that that intergenerational love. Um, and, you know, they're both, you know, ultimately their stories are totally different, but their stories are united by this idea of kind of trying to take control of your destiny. And I think those two things were really the heart of the story that I was trying to achieve. And I think we we achieved those two things. There might be other things that we didn't achieve, but I think we achieved those two things. And despite, you know, in Russell's case being, you know, uh, in many cases, quite a, uh, uh, you know, a difficult protagonist to back. I know, you know, Thomas worked very hard to, especially through the drag performances to illuminate, you know, the struggles that he was facing and how, you know, Russell versus Fishy kind of really, uh, demonstrated, you know, kind of where his light was. I'll tell you, I'll give you this for, for this to be your first feature. I'm impressed because there's a lot of dynamic elements to this film from the writing to the pr to, producing is behind the scenes. So you can't tell, but from the writing and from the directing that really are brought to life brilliantly. I thought you did a great job. My, my next question would be working with Cloris Leachman, which everybody wants to know how was it and what was your favorite scene working with her oh my goodness um 
it was amazing. You know, it was everything that you would imagine it to be. Um, she's a legend for a reason. Um, and, you know, she saved, you know, she famously said, you know, over the last kind of five, 10 years of her life that she would work right until the end. Um, and working with her, you saw that because, you know, um, she just, she saved all of her energy for the work. You know, when she arrived on set, um, you know, she was 90, you know, 93 years old. Um, I get the ages concerned, you know, confused now, but she was 93 years old, I believe when, when we shot and, you know, you, a 93 year old, you know, we were a little concerned, you know, can she do this? Um, you know, it was a full 10, 10 full days of shooting for Chloris out of a, out of a 21 day shoot. Uh, that's a lot of work for a, a 93 year old. And, you know, when you called action, just like it's the, just the life, just, she just rose up and gave you everything she had. And, um, she was an absolute delight. Uh, she was a total and famous rascal. Uh, she kept us all laughing. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and crying and all of those things, you know, and she was just, just this sweet old lady, you know, sprinkling magic across this set of, you know, a bunch of, you know, um, fresh faced filmmakers, you know, she, it was really a very magical experience. Well, none of that even surprises me remotely because she is such a dynamic character. I've loved her in so many different movies that she's done. Was she magnanimous? Was she, lovely to work with. Did she help you in your craft during the thing? Maybe saying redirect this shot, or maybe this might be a little better way to, to, to do the setup or, or, or even the, 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 uh, the, the content. Um, no, she wouldn't do that. Uh, she was uh, really interesting, you know, obviously mm -hmm. the first star mm -hmm. that I had worked with. So I don't, I don't have anything to compare it to. Um, I've worked with a lot of actors, but I haven't worked with anybody decorated uh you know in the way that she has with the stature and 70 years of experience um but what was interesting about chloris is that she was uh very focused on sort of her lane she was very focused on acting in the performance she would be studiously studying her sides beforehand and um she would for the good but she was actually disinterested in participating in really other elements of the process if you were to ask her uh, she famously hated questions, um, you know, like, what do you think of this costume? What do you think of where we're putting the camera? Um, she would really freeze up at those kind of questions. Like, don't bother me with that kind of thing. That's not what I'm here to do. She really just wanted to perform. Um, and that was really interesting. And also, you know, we even we hung out with her casually a few times uh, afterwards with her and her daughter were on her daughter traveled with her for um, the last many years for like two sets and was kind of with her all the time. And, you know, they even d really don't know that much about the film business. Um, you know, they were very curious about what our plans were for the film. None of that was, um, you know, so she was very much an actor and that, that was where she lived. Um, and she had everything to bring to that. Um, and she was, I think probably the most surprising thing, um, about working with Cloris uh, that I didn't expect um, was that, you know, there were moments where she would, she would give a performance, you know, and you would kind of come in for a redirect um, and sort of say, you know, thinking about doing something a little different here. And you, there was a couple of times where sort of the full pall of like a shame would come over her as if she'd really screwed up, you know, like, no, that wasn't right. I knew that wasn't right. You know, and I, I, it was just so interesting to imagine, you know, here's this decorated actor, 70 years doing this, and she still struggles against the weight of, you know, um, wanting to be the best artist she can be and has the, the, the vulnerability and the insecurity that you bring to the creative process that we all bring to a creative process. And that never left her, you know, that never left her. And that was incredible to see. That is such great insight because she's, her attitude is like, I'm an actor. 
I am going to do my craft to the best that I can. I don't always accomplish it on the first take. And I don't want to deal with all the other stuff. Give me the content and I'll deliver. Let's talk about uh, Thomas Duplessis. Is that how, how we call Russell? And, yeah. and how was working with Thomas? Because he was quite a gifted character. He, he brought the complexities of like, I, I, I'll say it again, selfishness and gay and caring and so many other things to life pretty well. Um, yeah, we were we were thrilled. So on the one hand, with Flores, as I mentioned earlier, we we were doing kind of a you know a, we wanted to cast a star in the role of Margaret. We wanted to discover a star um, for the role of Russell. And so, on the one hand, we were papering offers to Hollywood agencies. On the other hand, we were doing an open call in Canada. We so so we saw over 150 people for that role and really put them through the ringer. He had I think he had to do two or three different drag performances just in the audition process alone, fully choreographed and everything else. Wow. Um, and, uh, you know, he was the one. And had he ever done drag before? No, no, he had not. Uh, you know, so he a big consumer of drag, you know, um, Toronto, uh, you know, sort of a uh, queer person, uh, knew a bunch of the queens personally who performed. Um, and all of the choreography that you see uh, that his character performs, he developed um, on his own, uh, which was by design. We sort of said, you know, this is a forming artist. This is somebody who's figuring themselves out. This is someone early on in their in their kind of journey. So it kind of needs to come from you. We need to see working it out, trying on different things. And um, so all of that came from him. And the sort of the, the magic chemistry that him and Cloris ultimately had as Russell and Margaret was really you know, the luck of the draw. We didn't have a chance to screen test them. We didn't know how well this was going to work. Um, and uh, that was just kind of magic. And they got along very, very well uh, personally and as characters and, um, you know, had a great time kind of hanging out together in between um, in between takes and scenes and stuff like that. So, so yeah, we were, we were thrilled. We were we were absolutely thrilled, and the entire crew was just watching him and saying, "Oh my God!" You know, we hit the jackpot with this guy. I think our whole audience would agree that there were a lot of great characters that contributed to the film, and uh, some really good lines throughout the film as well. I think my favorite part was when the mom at the end came in and saw her son in drag. I'm assuming for the first time, and the connection that was made in that moment that kind of left their history behind. Was that the intention? Uh, that's really interesting. I haven't heard that before. Um, that was my take and a lot of people never hear what goes on in my mind, so. That's <laughs> good, you know, listen, like, um, I don't know. I mean, there was, you know, there was, there was definitely, the intention was definitely, um, you know, for it to be a moment of acceptance and love that, you know, most of the conflict that Russell's character is facing through the film is is internal. I mean, there are there are external conflicts that exist interpersonal, certainly with the ex boyfriend and um, with you know kind of his tryst with uh, with uh, Quake, whose character Zach. Um, but ultimately, the the arch his arch conflict is an internal one. Is kind of confronting his own shame and celebrating his own interest to do this thing that he's wants to do, but he's kind of worried that it'll simultaneously leave him uh, isolated and alone. Um, and so, uh, you know, I think that moment is about, you know, the full realization that for him, that it is all internal, that the, the various judgments that he's been receiving throughout the course of the film are minor relative to what he needs to do himself. You know, this is about him taking control of, uh, of his future. Um, so uh, your interpretation is certainly a good one. I mean, you know, my, my hope and hopes and dreams were always that, you know, it's the kind of film that, you know, sticks with people in such a way that there's, there's, a, there's something to react to, <laughs> um, you know, and there's interpretations to be made uh, at all. That's a win for me. Well, I'll leave out other interpretations that I've had over other films in this conversation. You know, thank you so much. What's on the agenda for you? What's next? Do you have anything else in the works? Where's this film going? Yeah, uh, I have a bunch of things in the works. I have nothing kind of hurtling immediately towards production now, but I do I do have a, 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 a crime drama series that I'm working on that's also set in Prince Edward County, which is the place where um, 
with a, also with a with kind of a, a queer story. Uh, I have you know, and then I have another family drama feature that I'm working on that's um, also has a bit of a queer lens, but uh, also a climate change kind of story. So there's a bunch of things in the works, um, and uh, hopefully it won't be six years like the last one to get <laughs> to get it made. Well, we um, hope we get uh, we hope we get your films, Phil. It's a pleasure having you on. There's still a lot more films for the 13th annual Outshine Film Festival, Fort Lauderdale edition, and there's films at home, Outshine at home that you can watch right now by going to our website at outshinefilm.com. Phil, thanks for being with us. Best of luck in your career, and thanks for giving Outshine your film. Thank you for having me. Take care. I just can't watch you do this a variety show anymore. I stocked the freezer. You're good for a month. Where are you gonna go? Hello? Hi, Grams. Russell. So, to what do I owe this much anticipated visit? I plan to check out this acting workshop. I'll stay as long as you need. How much? For all of them. What do you think? Have you come down with cancer? Now it seems like forever. What the hell is going on? Your grandmother seems to think that you've moved in. I am looking after her. I'm not myself, though. Sure you've noticed. Maybe I should call mom. No, no, no. You rush over here. Take me to that place. Very vibrant. What can I do for you, handsome? Is this some sort of gay night? County and college queers need a lighthouse. I'm it. All you queers, best pull out your eye queens and text every homo you know. This place is getting a serious reno. In the night, I, I got the impression this is working for you. Was I mistaken? So you're an actor? Was. What, you're a drag queen now? Sometimes. Stay here. You don't need to move to Millbrook. What can I do? I'm no longer productive. You're so quiet, Margaret. It's as bad as I want it to get. You should get back into bridge. Oh, please.